Good morning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining. We really appreciate you joining us this morning. We have a special presentation that's going to focus pretty much exclusively on LED panels, lay-in troughers. As you may know, MaxLight has the broadest product line, broadest offering of products as well as price points than probably anyone in the industry. And it's become a handful for many. And today's session is really to break down each panel, focus on its benefits, and to highlight the differences from one to the next. And today we have with us a special guest, Ken Charton. Welcome, Ken. Hey, how are you doing? Ken, everyone, is the uh, product manager for the LED panels, as well as all of our indoor retrofits, including panels and recessed cans. He's the man for the self-driven light bar, and he also supports our OEM group. So Ken is a busy man. Today we're going to focus on the topics are broken down as the LEDs in general, each particular style that we offer, the form factor, the shape. Then we're going to get into the different mounting options that we have. We're going to talk a little bit about dimming controls. And I should remind you all and thank you all for participating in our very first post your question in advance to the webinar so that we can address it live. And you should know that we had a lot of participants. Thank you all very much. Most of the questions were really addressed in the presentation that Ken and I had prepared for you. But those questions that were outside of the presentation that we had prepared, we will review those questions and the answers as a close. Without further ado, you should know that LED panels for lay-in proper applications go back to about 2005. If you're familiar with the LED history, at that time, the efficacies were still 40 to maybe 55, so weren't quite there as compared to fluorescence efficacy, which was, you know, 80 plus lumens per watt. But because of the controllability of the LEDs, there was some niche markets, mostly in places where high aesthetics were required. And our boss, our CEO, our leader, Yan Sung, he was visiting in South Korea and Dubai, and he saw these panels used mostly in decorative applications. And when he came back, he put a team together to develop the North America's first LED lay-in troffer, and that was by Max Line in 2009. So a little bit of history there. Let's start with the different types of throw, light throw, that LEDs in troffer applications perform. There's two distinct types. One is edge lit, one is direct lit. Direct lit, I'll tackle first. It's very straightforward. The LEDs are mounted in the back of the fixture to the PC boards uh, with the thermal heat sinks and the like, and the LEDs are pointing directly to the floor from the ceiling. So it is literally direct lit. As opposed to the edge lit, where the light is around the perimeter. The LEDs are actually pointing towards each other, and we have a special way to push the light downward. Basically, it's a light guide that takes the light and pushes it downward in a manner to where the whole panel is evenly illuminated. So you have no hot, hot or cold spots in either technology, direct lit or edge lit, depending on the lens. ArcMax. ArcMax is a beautiful fixture. It is a full volumetric fixture looks a lot like the indirect fluorescent fixtures that have become very popular amongst architects and lighting designers in the last decade or so. But in fact, it is a direct lit LED. And it has a, a full volumetric light output. Ken, can you speak to the full volumetric just a bit? Well, that gives you full light distribution throughout the room. So if you have panels close to the wall, you don't get any dark spots up towards the edge where the ceiling and the wall meet. It gives you light all throughout that angle. Which I think in some applications is absolutely required. I know a lot of energy managers out there would disagree. They would say, you know, you don't really need light on the walls. No one is working in that area. But in some applications where a full volumetric is required, this is probably the best product for that, plus with the high aesthetics. Let's talk a little bit about the micro T. This is a brand new product. I have seen this grow in popularity amongst the architects, but because of its look, and the pictures here do it justice, imagine a two by four that has two strips of micro cells. With a fluorescent version, the most you can do is two T8 fluorescent lamps, four foot fluorescent lamps, whereas you know, most light fixtures require three T8s to produce the lumens required for the area. So because these really couldn't put out as much light as a typical fixture, they were limited to areas where there's a lot of natural light, such as uh, entranceways and uh, uh, reception areas. 
But now with LED technology, well, Ken, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? Well, the MicroT features a really unique object for this product, which we call the microcell. And you can kind of see a two-by-two two fixture up here prominent in the slide. And in each kind of white strip, there are about 70-plus LEDs that are about an inch away from the uh, diffuser surface of there. And for a typical fixture, that will cause a lot of glare, and the light will be focused in a kind of a 120-degree beam angle. So the light will be very tight. The microcell optic diffuses the light evenly. So even though it's only an inch away from that surface, you can look directly at the LEDs, and there's no real visible glare. It has a very warm and inviting appearance. Also, another benefit to the microcell is it efficiently distributes the light and gives us a really good replacement for fluorescent fixtures, so you're not as dependent on other sources of light to light up a room that's maybe not as close to daylight. Thank you, Ken. Very helpful. Now, when you and I worked with David Delgado, who is our applications engineer and, and manages the team that does the lighting layouts, we learned that this particular fixture is better than just a one-for-one -one replacement going from fluorescent to LED. In other words, if you give us the opportunity to look at your application, your office environment or your, your schoolroom, whatever it is, through the lighting layout, we can probably lay these out in a manner in which you would need less fixtures than you had with fluorescence. So it's better than, in many cases, better than a one-for-one -one replacement. Would you agree? You know, that's a really great point. We were really excited when we got the photometrics back that kind of proved the value of the microcell. We compared it with our latest and greatest direct lit panels and edge lit panels that we have in the product line right now, and the Micro-T was by far the best replacement for a fluorescent fixture. Keep that in mind, folks. A very high aesthetic, a very, very narrow. This is as low profile as the Flatmax with this high aesthetic. What a great combination of features. Let's jump to the other end of the spectrum, Ken. Here we're looking at the Eco-T, which is for economy tropper. Here we were able to save the user a ton of money by tapping into existing fluorescent housings. With an existing fluorescent housing, there was no investment into tooling on our part that allowed us to get the product into the distribution very quickly. And what we're left with is a very comparable fluorescence replacement. It looks like a fluorescent. It acts like a fluorescent in that when you light it up, it looks like the three or four fluorescent T8 lamps. It has the same physical lens as most fluorescent fixtures, door frame, and so on. I should say, though, that beyond the typical fluorescent fixture that this looks like and mimics in form factor, it does also have 0 to 10 input controls. So you will be able to dim this product. So you're at a price point that's hardly higher than fluorescence. With rebates around the country, you can put you often under the cost of a fluorescent, plus you can add controls. Now, Ken, I believe we also have an option for this that gives it an aesthetic very similar to the direct lit. It's a optional lens that they can purchase separately and then install that in the field. Is that right? That is correct. That option is available. Thank you, Ken. Understood. We're going to jump over to the direct lit now. The direct lit flat panels is really a workhorse. It has all of the features of pretty much every product that we spoke about. It has the high aesthetic of an evenly lit lens like the edge lit. It has a 0 to 10 volts dimming, but with MaxLite simple dimming, it acts like a 0 to 1 to 10 volts. In other words, with this particular direct lit panel, you do not need to have a separate power pack. You don't need a separate on and off switch. This is, as far as features, control features, the most uh, packed panel that we offer. This is also the panel that is compatible with the MaxLite simple wireless remote. In applications where you might have concrete or cinder block walls, medical centers, universities, schools are coming to mind. These are places where you really can't pull wires through the wall without a great expense and a lot of time and labor. So consider the wireless remote option where you can mount the wireless remote directly to that concrete or cinder block wall. The zero to 10 dimming also has a three-wire dimming, which we'll speak a little bit more about in a moment. Flatmax, this was our first product. It's several generations in now. Basically, from one generation to the next, we are increasing the efficacy. And, uh, excuse me, I have a quick question here from Emily. Emily wants to confirm that with DirectLit, you don't need an on and off switch 
That is true. With the directlet, you do not need a separate wall switch, and you do not need a power pack. You can use a regular 0 to 1 to 10 volt dimmer or our handheld wireless dimmer, which can be mounted to the wall. Now back to the low-profile Flatmax, which was our first LED lay-in dropper. As the generations progress, we are increasing the efficacy, lowering the wattage, obviously, and making the return on investments on these products shorter and shorter. This is also DLC approved, so eligible for your rebates. This product has a, a slight, slightly higher aesthetic than the direct lit in that it has an aluminum frame as opposed to a white finish that you would find on the direct lit. But other than that, the performance is very, very similar. So if you're looking for a product where maybe you might need more controllability, I would recommend the direct. If you're looking for a product that needs the high aesthetic and or has very low clearance for the product, then the Flatmax would be your product. This gets under sprinkler systems, HVAC systems, communication cables that are running through our ceilings these days. So very, very low profile. At about five-eighths of an inch is the whole panel thickness, except for where the driver sits on the back, which is about a six-by-six six box. So a very, very low profile, maybe one of the lowest in the industry. We have a question from California asking about occupancy sensors. Let's talk about occupancy sensors with all of these panels. If you are going to be doing on-off occupancy, well, of all of these panels are obviously compatible. You would use your motion sensor by breaking in on the AC side. Each driver for all of these panels has obviously your simple three-wire, your positive, your negative, and your ground for the AC connection, and you would connect that like you would any other light source, but they also have the low-voltage dimming side. So for on-off motion sensing, you would break into the AC side, and it would act like a wall switch. It would be turning your fixture on and off as motion is detected. Now, for high-low motion sensing, that's a little different. If we're talking where you want to have, say, 50% light when no one is in the area and bump it up to 100% when the area becomes occupied, there are 0 to 10 volt occupancy sensors out there, and we'd be happy to work with you to find the best 0 to 10 volt high-low occupancy sensor for your application. I hope that answers your question. So MRI panels. What MRI rooms require is no AC power and only non-ferrous or non-magnetic materials. So MaxLight has built a special product just for this application. We can put up to eight panels with a single driver. We have an eight-panel driver, a seven-panel driver, a six-panel driver, all the way down to one. So one driver for up to eight panels. Now, what's interesting to me is that many of our sales for this remote driver MRI fixture are not for MRI areas. In other words, people are taking advantage of using just a single driver to light up as many as eight panels because in their applications, that's advantageous. We don't have a problem with that at all. Although designed for MRI rooms, of course it works in any application. Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons of single driver for a single panel versus a single driver for multiple panels. Single driver one of the advantages for a one-for-one, one, well, is an installation. You lay in a panel, it's already ready for its AC power to be put in. If you're doing a one-for-one one replacement from fluorescent to LED, you've got the AC power is already there. It's pretty simple. So that's one of the advantages for a one-for-one one replacement from fluorescent to LED. Probably a one-for-one one driver is your best option. Now, there are applications, however, where you're going to be adding, say, dimming controls, and you'll have to run your dimming wires, your 0 to 10 volt low voltage wires. So we always recommend, like, doorbell wire. You're going to run that from your wall switch or your wall dimmer or your building control system to each fixture, to each individual panel. And in some cases and applications, that can be rather burdensome. So in those applications, you might want to consider a single driver for multiple panels where you only have to bring the control leads to the single driver to get up to eight panels all working off of that. One of the downsides of a remote driver or a single driver for multiple panels is that these panels, I'm sorry, these drivers are designed for a fixed current output. So if you have an eight-panel driver, and you, for some reason, removed, say, two panels, it would be out of balance now, and you would be overdriving those six panels. The driver should be replaced, 
and change to a six-panel driver, if you're following me. So it's important to keep the load even throughout the lifetime of the installation. So there's some pros and cons for you. I should also throw in that the math works out that in an application with four to eight panels, it saves you a little bit of money going with the single driver option. From one to four, it may or may not, but from four and up, it almost always works out because the panels obviously are a little bit less costly because they don't have a driver on each one, that the, the math works out that from about four to eight panels, you can actually save a couple of percentage points on your bottom line by considering the single driver for multi-panel option. Let's spend a couple of minutes talking about the mounting that we have available for all of these fixtures. Obviously, 100% of them are designed for lay-in grids. These are your 2x2, two 2x4, two, two sometimes 1x4 lay-in grid situations. You generally have fluorescence that dominate that application today. You would pull out your fluorescence, put in your LED in the same manner that you would the fluorescent. It's going to lay in the same track. Some municipalities require earthquake chains or hurricane cable, something along those lines, you would follow your local code exactly the same as you would for a fluorescent fish. So for the lay-in grid, it's basically what we all know, which is a standard lay-in with your safety cable or chains. Surface mount, which we have for most of the products, not all, surface mount is kind of like, think of it as a frame around a picture, and then you mount that picture to a wall or, in this case, a ceiling. We have different styles and shapes for the different types of panels that we've just reviewed together in most of the sizes, 1x4, 2x2, and 2x4. So in this case, and we've had a couple of jobs where they actually didn't want to mount it to a ceiling. They were using them in atypical applications, and they were needing them on the walls. So it looks and works in that way as well. It looks great and works well on any surface. So if you don't have a lay-in grid type of a ceiling, you have, say, a sheetrock type ceiling, you can mount this so that it is mounted to that surface. We also have a flange kit, which can be used to make these fixtures flush in a sheetrock type ceiling. And the cable hung, so cable kits. These cable kits are used widely in data centers. Large numbers of servers and PCs, zero to small numbers of human beings in this area. So the aesthetics are not that important. And in those applications, they're almost always using controls. Do keep in mind that some of our lay and troffers require a surface mount kit before it can be cable hung something to keep in mind. Let's jump over to control. Specifically, let's spend a minute talking about MaxLite's remote wireless dimming that is designed to work with our direct lit panel. The direct lit panel, as I mentioned earlier, has a higher level of controls. It has the MaxLite simple dimming system, which means it's a three-wire, zero to 10-volt dimming system. And in this case, it acts like a zero to one to 10-volt dimming system. So what one would do if they had an application where they could not run wires through the wall or they needed to have handheld remote dimming, they would take our kit, which comes with three parts, the handheld remote, the PC board with three wires, and, of course, the wireless receiver antenna. The installation is very, very simple. You choose a single fixture to be what we will call the primary fixture. Each direct lit fixture has a yellow, a gray, and a violet. And this PC board has a yellow, a gray, and a violet. So wiring is super, super simple. So you do your three wires connection. You plug in your antenna. You poke your antenna through somewhere where it will have line of sight with the handheld remote. And now you have a single fixture that can be turned on and off. It can dim infinitely from the high to the low. Or you can hit a button to go all the way to high or all the way to low. Now, to get additional fixtures to follow that primary fixture, we're going to take a two-wire, the gray and the violet, and we're going to go from the primary fixture to fixture two, from two to three, three to four, and so on, up to 20 fixtures. Now, the yellow wire is only for the primary fixtures, so you only have to do the jumper wires for two wires up to 20 fixtures. It's a great feature, and you should know, besides the installation time being much shorter than a typical wall dimmer, the cost of this dimming system is about half of a 0 to 10 wall dimmer. And we also have a holster, which you can mount to the wall. It has the same hole patterns as any wall plate, and you slip the remote right in there. Most people won't even know that it's a handheld wireless. It will look like a wall-mounted remote. Two wires, 0 to 10. Basically, with two wire versus three wire, and all of our fixtures have at least a two wire, the direct lit, as I mentioned, has three wire. So with a two-wire 
zero to 10 dimming system, which is probably the most popular LED indoor fixture dimming that there is. To do multiple fixtures, one would have to use the dimmer as well as a dimmer relay pack, whether it's Lutron or Levitin, and we love all those guys. There is a limit to the number of fixtures that it can dim, depending on the model dimmer that you choose. And then to go over that limit, you require a relay pack. So we work with you and the dimming company that you choose to choose the best dimmer for your particular application. And let us help you with that. Versus the three wire, where as you can see, and just like the remote wireless dimming that I described before, you're hooking the three wire up from the dimmer to the first panel or the primary panel, and then just jumping two wires from the primary to the second and third and so on. And in this case, or in those cases, you do not need a relay pack. I do also want to mention, Ken was going to mention, that there's a lot of dolly controls out there. That's D-A-L-I, dolly controls. And there are adapters that you can buy for your dolly control systems that will bridge over to 010 controls. You would mount this adapter to our fixtures and then your dolly controls to that adapter. So we can help you and work with you to support dolly controls for these flat panels that we have reviewed together today. Now, I had mentioned earlier that we had a lot of questions. I think we had about 20 or so questions, most of which, frankly, were fundamental and were covered throughout the presentation. But we were left with a handful of questions that kind of fell out of the norm, and I'm very glad to share them with you today. So first question that we had that, well, you know, that didn't fit exactly with the presentation that we had planned, which is which panel works best for which application? And I'll start by saying that it's a very subjective question, but it, it gives me the opportunity to review all of the fixtures and talk about their aesthetics. So the Arc Max was the first one we talked about today. I certainly would not put that in a public school system or public housing. It's a high end, a high aesthetic. You're going to find the architects, lighting specifiers, and the like like this. Where you would put a fluorescent indirect like T8 or T5 is the same place where you would put an Arc Max. Then we have the Micro T. This in the past was kind of limited to where there was a lot of natural light, but with the Max Light Micro T LED, it really opens it up to put it all throughout the facility. So if you have a high end office working environment, university, maybe where you want a high aesthetic in a public or private area, the Micro T is absolutely an option for you. Where the Eco T is kind of the other end of the spectrum. If you're looking for cost, if you're looking for an economical way to convert from fluorescent to LED, take advantage of the long life, the higher efficacy and be able to add controls where you could not have them before, the micro T is your best solution. And then we have the direct lit. I go there first for aesthetics if I have the room because it's a typical thickness of about three inches or so, same as about a fluorescent, but it has the high aesthetic evenly lit lens like the flat max where there's no hot and cold spots, looks a lot like a skylight in the middle of the daytime and has added controls. So that's kind of my go-to product. I start with the direct lit and see if that's not the best one for the situation and then move over from there. Then we have the flat max, which obviously when there's low clearance where you have maybe fire lines running through the ceiling or HVAC, places where there's not a lot of room up there, the flat max is probably going to be your first go-to. And the MRI slash single driver option or remote driver option, MRI is obviously the MRI fixture, non-ferrous metals, but for other applications where a remote driver would be advantageous to you, either through the installation or for adding controls and the like, it's a good product to consider. So all of our guests, by the way, had indicated that the question should be kept private. So thank you for question number one. Uh, question number two, why is the surface mount kit so pricey? Customers always balk, and I don't know what to tell them. Well, you know, we feel the same. We feel your pain. We're losing those sales as well. Frankly, the answer is low volume. You know, for every 1,000 panels we sell, we might sell a dozen or so of the surface mount kits. But Ken was going to add for us today that we are looking to have these made overseas to where the labor costs, and these have a high labor component. These are made here in the States. So we're going to move them overseas so that we can be more competitive in price. And we hear you. So we're, we're reacting and look for a change to that situation very soon. Question two and three kind of tie together more about the surface mount. Question four, what is the heat output of LEDs per watt in comparison to fluorescence, say T8 or T5. 
Well, we did a little research for this before I just came out with the answer. I wanted to get it validated. And, well, the answer is now confirmed. A watt is a watt is a watt. In other words, 100 watts of LED puts out about the same heat as 100 watts of fluorescent. The light source itself, power is power. But what you're going to have is much more light for that 100 watts of LED than you would for 100 watts of fluorescent. If you required 100 watts of fluorescent, these days you probably only need 55 or 60 watts of LED. So your heat and the impact that that heat has on your air conditioning systems in the winter time will not be negatively impacted or will be positively impacted because it generates less heat because you're using less watts. Well, the heat per watt is the same. I hope you're following me there. Dimming controls with the flat panels. I think we covered that well. Basically, you're going to use a straight 0 to 10 dimmer off the shelf, depending on the make and model of that dimmer and the number of panels that you want to dim. You may or may not need a relay pack. Calling us in advance to the installation day. Unfortunately, the tech department here at MaxLine gets most of these questions from the installer when he's on the job site. And we'd much prefer to work with you up front so by the time it comes to the installer on the job site, it's very easy for them. So use us. Look at us as unpaid employees of yours when it comes to putting these projects together with the MaxLite flat panels. Last question. How exactly do your panels come prepared to be electrically and physically installed? I'm going to stop there and, and with that question. It's a great question because it's different, and you might assume that it's different. But in fact, when you look at the back of these panels, like a fluorescent panel, it's got knockouts where you're going to bring in your whip connector. Inside there, that box that you can open up to make those connections, you have your hot, your neutral, and your ground, and you're going to make those same three connections like you would any other fluorescent fixture. Now, depending on the panel that you choose, the physical form factor varies slightly, but what they all have in common is knockouts for your AC power and additional knockouts for running your control wires. Remember, all of these panels have a 0 to 10 input, and those don't need to be sleeved. They don't need to be in conduit. They're low voltage. They're DC wires, and they're perfectly safe, and you know, UL and so on all have validated that the low voltage side doesn't need any special shielding whatsoever. However, I should say in some municipalities due to rodents and other issues, you may have to follow your local code. But as far as UL is concerned and national code, it's not necessary to do anything special with these low voltage wires. The AC side, you treat the way that you always have. Second half of the question, i.e., what kind of size of wires stick out? Well, we have coming out of the driver, we have 18 gauge, hot, neutral, and ground. What size connector? It's 18 gauge. You're going to use the proper connectors. The box, you can do your connections inside the housing. All electrical connections have to be in a metal enclosure. That has always been the case. That will probably always be the case. And these fixtures have that enclosure built in. Are they designed literally to be just dropped into a suspended ceiling grid? The answer is yes. Just like a fluorescent fixture is designed to be dropped into a standard grid ceiling. But you should know that most municipalities require that you also add, they usually use aluminum wire in case that there's an earthquake or a hurricane, the fixture doesn't fall out of the ceiling and injure someone. But I must say that my life's experience is when I'm sticking my head through the ceilings, and I've had my head in hundreds of ceilings, only a small percentage of them are actually doing this with the fluorescent fixtures. So let me just say, whatever you were doing for your fluorescence, it's exactly the same for the LED. And the weights are very similar. I don't want you to think that you're buying a heavier fixture. The weights are right in the tolerance from the lightest to the heaviest fluorescent fixture. You'll find that the LEDs are, are right in there. So uh, no modifications are required. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I really do appreciate everybody's questions in advance. And I have one question here, fast words, flat max, which is obvious is a full cutoff. I'm not sure your question, Kirk, there. Maybe you can hit me on the side at gmurphy at maxlight.com, and we can get into that some more. I'd love to talk to you. It's been a while, Kirk. Everybody, again, thank you so much for your time and attention. Really appreciate it. I want to just remind you all that we do have the MaxLite University, which is completely free. A lot of distributors are using the MaxLite University for new hires. We have more and more graduates. We've had about 100 graduates now, and, and the rate of graduation is coming quicker and quicker. Tap into that service. It's absolutely free. Same goes with what we do for rebates with your utilities. We can do everything for you and with you concerning how to collect your utility dollars. Folks, again, thank you for your time and attention. Have a great rest of the day.
Bye-bye.